All right, quiet on the set, everybody. I'm trying to shoot a TV pilot here. I want this to go well. All right, everyone know what they're doing? We got the music queued up for the opening sequence, Flight of the Jelly Mole. Got the narrator ready. All right, Terrible Tales with Spoon and Packet, episode 101. Places, everybody, and action. Spoon and Packet are no ordinary travelers. They have gone where no human being has gone before. Under the watchful guidance of Radis and C.S., they have traveled beneath the crust of the earth, beneath the Maharovichik discontinuity, beneath the mantle, beneath hell itself, into the underworld of trash known as Basura Larga. Let's hear from Pinello on the history of Basura Larga. Okay, so let me tell you about Basura Larga. This is an old place, this is. 500 years. In Italian, we call it Robaccia Lunga. And it all began because the King of France, uh, Francois I, he made a deal with a little devil, Il Diavoletto. This king, he says, my city of Paris is so dirty and bad. And so he writes a letter to every person in Paris that say, don't put your trash and your nastiness and your, your robaccia, spazzatura, immondizia all over these streets of mine. Put them into baskets and then carry them outside the city. So now, Francois has all these trashy baskets like a fence around Paris. So here comes Il Diavoletto to the king, disguised as Pope Innocent VIII. He make a deal with the king. Francois must print books that show how to torture demons out of the insane. In return for spreading belief in the evil powers and causing so many people to suffer, the little devil will solve all of the king's trouble with trash. The demon, he opens up a great hole in the earth. This hole goes deeper than the inferno itself. And into this hole he makes all the trash go. And when King Francois died, his demonic deal was sold to other kings and queens. And so the pit grew bigger. Francois called it Le Grand Fosse d'Orgeur, the great pit of garbage. <laughs> it was renamed to Basura Larga by King Philip II of Spain. Right now, as we speak, trash is raining down into the pit. The stuff at the bottom gets burned away as it is pushed deeper into the fires. And when you burn away into nothing, finito. I took Spoon and Packet here to learn about their history, but I also had an ulterior motive. I came here to find Dahlia again. All right, uh, that was pretty terrible, but I got me a worse one. The Unknown Spice. See, the Unknown Spice was an orphan packet, misplaced at the uh, moment of its intended use. Saved from a stir in death, it uh, wandered behind the appliances and uh, skulked along the wainscoting until the deepest dark of night. 
Its long life gave it too much time to ponder its own existence. Each passing day, its original purpose became more remote. Unable to develop meaningful relationships with other spices, it became despondent. Finally, tormented by this obsession with self-knowledge, it tore itself open, spilling its contents everywhere. I heard it say quietly to itself as it passed, I am Fettuccine Alfredo Mex. We end tonight's program as usual in Sanford's Walrus Corner. Hi everybody, welcome to Walrus Corner. My name is Sanford. I'm not a real walrus. I'm a rubber walrus. That's a very different thing. Tonight we're going to learn about the Arctic walrus. <laughs> walrus live up in the Arctic Sea. They're huge. They're 900 to 1400 kilograms. I'm a rubber walrus. I weigh 100 grams. They've got huge, sharp teeth called tusks and whiskers and brown skin, and they look bald, but no, they're covered with tiny hairs. I'm a rubber walrus. Hey, Sanford. I, I am bald. Sanford. And I'm bright orange. Hey, Sanford, we're cutting the show short. Oh, it, That's right. Okay. We're done. Say good night. Uh, okay, good night, everybody. That's right. <laughs> I've been meaning to talk to you. I think Walrus Corner should be a longer segment. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, Sanford. I mean, we got a tight budget, a tight schedule. Can't just put 20 minutes of Walrus Corner on. I mean, really. <laughs> How much is there to know about walruses? <gasps> you have no idea. There is an endless amount you can know about walruses. Okay, all right. Obviously, I've touched a nerve here. I'm sorry, uh, Sanford. Uh, okay, look, I'll talk to Spoon. I'll talk to Lord Beasy, he's in charge of production now, actually, and uh, we'll see what we can do. That's all I was asking. That's all I was asking for, Mr. Ugar. Actually, my name is Packet. Sorry, Mr. Ugar. like to introduce a world premiere video of Quail and Pork Pie's new band, Wolf Pig. Wolf Pig? A terrible name for a band. All right, here's the world premiere video. Gee, everybody, it's Pork Pie. I'm going to lay some heavy beats on you with my buddy Quail. And, oh, man, Quail, you got stink foot right now. <laughs> Quio, what is this? It's not what we agreed to. You guys are freaking out. Get your psychedelic noodling off my screen, pronto. Now that's what I call unbridled musical iconoclasm. Peace, y'all. Next week on Spoon and Packet. Dahlia vs. Crocodilos. Crocodilos. The monster at the foot of stack of books. A voracious and hungry beast devouring the knowledge of the underworld. His only adversary? 
a brave young lab rat with an ear on her back. Dahlia 306. Dahlia had been in Basura Larga for years now. When she discovered Stack of Books, she knew she could find a way to get back to the surface somewhere in its infinite library. Over time, she had taught herself how to read, write, cook, sew, and bandage. Her will to survive was matched only by her thirst for knowledge. It was as much for the book's preservation as it was her own that she constantly challenged, evaded, and fought off the monster. Crocodalos. Alright, that's it. Show's over. Get out of here. Penguins! Penguins! Oh, oh, it's just a dream. It's just a dream.